Minority Report. You guys are coming out of the box kind of strong. You're coming off the film a little bit. So kind of what's the jumping in point for the audience? It takes place in the same world as the film, but we build on it and we really carry on. You don't have to have seen the film to enjoy the movie, the show, but if you have, there are a ton of Easter eggs and it's really expanding that world. Yeah, and, I, and what I think the, one of the great things about it is, you know, it, the last act of the of the film, you have sort of Samantha Morton and, and Tom Cruise working together in this this precog, and you didn't really get to sort of see the precog, um, the humanity of the precog in the movie, and I think that's something that the, the yeah. series does really well. In the movie, the precogs are obviously the center of pre crime, but they're the kind of computer at the heart of it. He liberates the one Agatha, and we're taking the tack of well, what would it be like to be a precog post pre crime, still having these visions but trying to act on them on your own, live in the world. Uh, so it's kind of a fun, different take on that. It's very character driven. But also feels like that it's not cool to be a precog. Like you're not supposed to be part part of that anymore. They're they're they live in secret. They have to live in anonymity. After pre crime ended at the end of the film, there's that amazing shot uh, in the in the film that kind of pulls out of their cabin where these three characters who are almost like walking fetuses who had no, had no life other than living in the milk vat now have to learn to be human. And, uh, and and you know watching that, I thought that was that was the moment where it clicked, and, and then we came and started talking about about well, what happens next. You know what happens if you're one of those three people uh, who's haunted by that now has to live secretly, and yet you you see murders. Do you just run away, or do you try to engage? Do you try to act? And then there's the fun of what's it like to be someone who's a preternaturally a genius but has absolutely no so social skills because you were never raised with people. Yeah. And what's fun, what, what Vega's character, Megan Good's character, is a cop, has to team with Stark's character, who is a precog. But in the movie, there was an infrastructure in place. There was due process, and, and you could arrest somebody. These two have to team up without any type of judicial infrastructure and kind of stop crimes in the margins without also being detected. So it's a great challenge for them, not to mention the writers on the show, to come up with this and keep it going. So and then so another, so. the other huge part in the fun challenge for us is thinking, okay, yes, that plus it's 50 years from now. Oh, that, yes. you know, and and, there, and and the fun yeah. that the movie had with it. We had, we're in that, we're following that legacy. We have to be thinking about that in terms of everything. You know, you can't just have a cell phone. You have to think, what's that next iteration? Of you can't just kill somebody with a gun. You know, there's <laughs> lightsabers available. <laughs> but damn, you've given it away. <laughs> and that's what makes the procedural really interesting because procedures have gotten really stayed now. To be able to play with that future tech and future crime, so you can have unpredictable and surprising twists and, and the procedural stories. That's what's great about it. Yeah, we don't start with a dead body. We start with there's somebody who's going to die in 36 hours. How do we stop it um, without leaving too many fingerprints? Yeah, exactly. It's it's sort of that reverse of the of the traditional detective genre. Right? Yeah. What were some of the challenges trying to create it for television versus the movie? Everybody knows. Well, I mean, skill. I mean, production first of all, scope and visual effects and all that. And how do you? you know, I've worked for Stephen for 20 years. This is the first uh, film that he directed that we were making as a television show, and it yeah. kept all of us up at night. It's like, okay, well, you want to sort of do it justice, but you have television money. We have great money from Fox, but it's, you know, how you sort of do those production tricks to make it look as big of, as a movie when you have television money. But we had a great visual effects company named Close Effects, which just did great, great um, production designer and DP and, and director that sort of gave it that cinematic look. And it's come so far that you can just, yeah, you can achieve that now on television. You see it all the time. It's just, it's, it has that kind of epic scope, but the ability to dig deeper and really live with these characters uh, going forward and explore some of those themes that the movie was able to only touch on because the precogs were the sort of, they were the system, they were the computer pre-crime, uh, and, and everyone remembers Samantha Morton from that film, uh, but now the ability to live with that longer and explore that world more so that we can, we can uh, do the things they did 10 years later and given what the technology has become, so from touch screens that, that we saw in that film and now the gestural interfaces from the film, now we can evolve that into three-dimensional space. What's it like when you have retinal interfaces? What's it like, you know, we have been, been the effects that we've been able to sort of bring into and realize that have been really exciting. I see two trends in procedurals right now. Odd couple procedurals like Sleepy Hollow yourself um, or 
Lucifer, and then I see movie continuations like Limitless, Rush Hour, You Guys Again. How do you differentiate between, or how do you stand out in, in this trend? Well, that's a good question because Max and I want to resist the automatic forced romantic coupling. These that could go down and happen down the road, but it but it's not something we're set, setting out to do. We want them to be an odd couple and follow the logic of it. He's a pre cop. He hasn't he hasn't dated. He may be a virgin. We don't know. She's she's a cop and teaming them together and see what would happen. We're trying to make it realistic. They're gonna have fun together. We're gonna it's a lot of humor in the show. So we'll we'll end up going there with it. But it's not I think it's a fresh take on the couple because it's not a forced banter. It comes from the from the characters. Can you talk about the No, I was I was nodding in affirmation. Okay. <laughs> Can you talk about the cast and what they bring to the role? Uh, the cast is really exceptional. They put together an amazing cast. Uh, the, the role of Star, uh, that Stark Sands plays Dash, one of the three cogs, uh, yeah, who's really a, a kind of our initial point of view character as a three cog, uh, is an incredibly difficult role because you've got someone who you have to portray this person who's an adult human living in the world, living in a world in the future, who spent the first 15, 18 years of his life essentially a vegetable hooked up to a machine and now he's come out and his desire to connect with people is uh, meets the impediment of the fact that he can see murders and some of the people the murders of the people around him for what happens uh, and so the complexity of that role is insane uh, and he does it with charm and it's really amazing and Megan Good balancing that out as this shrewd kind of hard driving detective who has a sort of her own sort of haunted kind of history that she's seeking to sort of uh, get beyond, uh, and the two of them working together and redeeming each other has been amazing. And then Laura Regan and as uh, Agatha and Wilmer Valderrama, uh, who's the most charming guy you will ever meet. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing. And, 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 yeah. and Laura has this sort of ethereal uh, maternal quality to her that's just amazing when you see it in the pilot. And, you know, hard sort of hard role to follow up from Samantha Moore. You know, yeah. she does a pretty awesome job. Of it. So.